So in the rock cycle, what can your examiner ask as long questions? Well, here is what they can ask. Writing this on the front cover, okay? So you have it there. The first thing that they can ask you, and there's six S's in total they can ask you, is your categories of rock. Now you'll know this from juniors, so this is the basics here that we're looking at. Your igneous, sedimentary, and your metamorphic rocks. Okay, so your igneous, your sedimentary, and your metamorphic rocks. So each of them, obviously we'll write them down in a second, we've viewed it in each category. That is the three categories of rock they can ask you. They cannot ask you anything else. They can ask you about the associated landscape. There's two associated landscapes which they can ask you, which is your karst landscape. And the second one is your basalt plateau. Okay, so your karst landscape, your basalt plateau. The last thing they will ask you as a long question is about human interaction with the rock cycle. And here we're going to look at geoecology, geothermal energy. So geothermal energy. Now, I promise you, as we move throughout this section, what you're going to see is that there is one, two, three, four, five, six essays in total. You might have to combine two of them together that your examiner will ask and that has ever been asked, okay? So we're gonna keep referring back to this. Now, before we look at them long questions, let's open over onto our first page here, which is actually number just page number two, and get your highlighter, get your pin at the ready, okay? So we're just gonna go down through this very, very quickly. We'll note a few things down on the board beside me here as we move along. So it says rocks are categorized according to the processes, highlight that word processes, that form them. And they're divided into three main categories. So you have your igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Now, you might pause the video and take a second and write down, do you actually know two igneous rocks or two sedimentary rocks or two metamorphic rocks? If you do, pause and pop them down. Otherwise, let's write them down here together. So our igneous rocks are granite and basalt. Our sedimentary rocks are limestone and sandstone. And finally, our metamorphic rocks. Now I'm going to be popping down three metamorphic rocks for you. Marble, quartzite, and the final one we're going to do is slate. You could do schist either, okay? So any of them three. So there are first three things that we know now, okay? Our categories of rock. Now, moving on from here, and actually one thing I did actually forget to mention at the top of this page, write down short questions, part A's only. This is for our short questions and part A's what we're doing at the moment. So it says the rock cycle demonstrates the formation, breakdown and reformation of rocks due to internal, highlight that word, endogenic, endogenic forces. Now beside that, just pop down there, 2018, question number 2A. That's 2018, this, apologies, that came up in 2018, question 2A. They asked you to briefly explain what the term endogenic means. Now I want you to write this down. So endogenic forces are forces which occur inside the Earth's crust, okay, or under the Earth's surface. So an example of an endogenic force, and write down EG there, would be convection currents. And the second type, which is your external or exogenic. Now, exogenic forces are forces which happen on the Earth's surface, on the Earth's crust. So an example of an exogenic force, and pop this down, would be something like weathering and erosion. So your processes of denudation, mass movement, they are your exogenic forces. So remember this came up in 2018, maybe if you the exam papers, pop over 2018, question 2A. You have your brief little figure of your rock cycle there, that has been asked once in a part A, but quite some time ago. After that, we have our groups, so how each is formed. Now, I have the highlighter at the ready. 
So our igneous rocks are formed when hot molten volcanic material, hot at the words, cools and solidifies. Now, cools, obviously the magma or lava, whichever it is, cools and solidifies. If you don't like that word solidifies, pop under it, become solid. But every igneous rock, I suppose how they are formed is from cooling and solidification. Your examples there are main two we have is granite and basalt, we have dolerite and we have gabbro. The second category which we have here is our sedimentary. Our sedimentary is formed as a result of compression and compaction. Now highlight them two words there and I want you to write beside there lithification. That is another word for compression and comp compaction which you'll see later on. Of the remains of either plants, animals, rocks, whatever it may be. So your examples, as you'll see there, is limestone, sandstone, um, apologies, shale, and coal. Finally, our last category here, which is our metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks, these are rocks which were once igneous and or sedimentary rocks that were changed as a result of highlight great heat and slash air pressure. So heat from inside the Earth's mantle and pressure from plate tectonics, plate movements. Marble, quartzite, slate, schist, and gneiss. That's pronounced as gneiss there at the end. Now moving over to our next page, which is page number three. And on page number three, you'll see your map of Ireland. Now again, at the top of this page, write down short questions, part A's only. So these first two pages are for short questions, part A's only. Now on this map here, what we're going to do is we're actually going to circle our different areas around the country and where you're going to find each of these rock types. Now this has come up twice, this came up in 2018 as a short question, pop this down, and 2011 as a short question. So this, both of them times, 2018, 2011, you would have seen this on the exam paper. A map of Ireland, them asking you what the rock type or what the name of the area was. Now, what rock types do we have? So let's start, let's start at the top. So up here, up, I suppose, in Northern Ireland, what we have is we have basalt. So I want you to circle this and write this in on the map. So we have basalt, and this area is referred to the Antrim Dury Plateau. Sometimes we say the Giant's Causeway, but that is actually just that small little kind of column area of it, okay? So the Antrim Dury Plateau. Now, down a little bit further, I suppose down just below kind of Dublin area, what we have here, and again circle it, is granite. So that's our two igneous rocks in the Wicklow Mountains. Coming around here, down in Munster, this area here, we have sandstone. So again, circling it, writing it in. And we can either refer to this as the Cork and Curry Mountains or the Munster Mountains, either is perfect, okay? A little bit further around, over here, we have the Burning County Clare, which obviously has limestone. Now, one thing to point out is limestone can also be found in the central plains of Ireland. So in 2018 and 2011, when they asked you for limestone, they actually were pointing to the center of Ireland. So be very, very careful of that. Now, up a little bit further in Connemara, in County Galway, just around approximately here, you have marble. And it's actually green marble to be precise, if you want to note that in for yourself. And that is in Connemara. Connemara in County Galway. Now, the last one we're going to pop in, and the last one that has ever been asked, is up here, and I can just about reach, I'm a bit vertically challenged, in Mount Urgell in County Donegal. So we have quartzite in Mount Urgell in County Donegal. Now, when that came up in 2018 and 2011, for just knowing four of them, okay, now they asked you specific ones, for just knowing four of them, you got eight marks, okay, you got a full short question, right, so make sure you learn this, they're not asking you for a precise one, they don't want you to draw the map, 
they are just going to point to an area and ask you for the rock type.